you know, the near-term advances in AR are going to be quite profound, whether it's through intelligent agents or use of robotics, uh, the sort of middle ground between uh, manufacturing and sort of the old-style robots and ones that are quite responsive to the human being. Um, so no matter where you are, whether you're in developing nations or developed nations, everybody's going to be impacted by the impact of, uh, or the proliferation of AI. And a lot of it's going to be hidden, whether it's uh, working in the background in terms of making you safer uh, on the internet or safer in your car or safer when you're shopping or providing more choices or helping with your health care. Uh, or from a country standpoint, helping to um, manage things like uh, the underdeveloped areas and ensuring that there's proper sort of services that are going to be provided. AI can help in all of that. There isn't an area that it cannot help. So the, so the impact is going to be profound. It's going to be short term and it's going to even actually be faster than what people had originally t anticipated. And for that reason, Stanford, for example, has their 100-year project, and they've come up with a report in September of this year. The US White House has come up with two reports on it. The British Standards Institute has come out with information on this. The European Parliament has come up with a document. Almost every sort of major entity out there is now um, involved with it, including the ITU. The ITU wants to facilitate the discussion. They realize the importance of getting in front of, or at least staying pace with the, all of the uh, major happenings around the world because it does impact everybody. Every walk of life, every corner of the world is going to be in some way influenced by AI. The social implications of AI are already being felt somewhat today. You know, for example, you have um, Singapore already have launched uh, fully autonomous uh, taxis. So what is that going to mean from a labor market? But then it's going to provide opportunities for those taxi drivers to maybe move into other areas. So there's going to be some displacement, but then there's also going to be new job opportunities that are going to open up. So that's just one example. You know, you, or you have a situation where you have doctors uh, who are doing uh, diagnosis and uh, they only have a certain amount of uh, capacity for keeping up with all the trends. Um, augmenting that with artificial intelligence can make their jobs much more efficient. In fact, their error rate goes down significantly. And then from an underserved population standpoint, again, if you can apply AI to those underserved populations, um, if you have limited medical resources, of course, it can extend the, the ability of one doctor to cover many, many more patients or much a wider geographic ground. Even in areas of mapping things like poverty, uh, at one time, it requires somebody to manually go out, uh, sometimes under dangerous conditions, to rural areas to find this kind of information. Through AI, you can do it through satellite imagery, and uh, you can map this kind of information. And then, if you can get that kind of information in real time, you can put resources there. So, the applications, again, are very profound, widespread, and immediate, and um, people have to be cognizant of this. You know, that's a good question, and that it will have an impact, of, in fact, quite a broad impact on the workforce. From a young people's standpoint, um, I guess the key is to, you know, put a little bit of priority on things like science, technology, uh, uh, mathematics, and so on, you know, the STEM uh, areas. Uh, try to keep up on uh, data, data science, the, the whole idea of data analysis. Uh, be well read, keep up with the trends. Um, I guess that's the key, you know, especially in the AI space. There's literally announcements that are happening daily, in fact, multiple times a day. Things that used to happen once a week, perhaps once a year, are, it's moving that fast. And, you know, this was forecasted in the Fourth Industrial Revolution, a book by Professor Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum, uh, and a paper by UBS, uh, by uh, two MIT professors, Ben Jolson and McAfee, and something called the Second Machine Age. Um, you know, a number of different entities have predicted that uh, it's going to have a profound effect and the young people especially have to be prepared. And you become prepared by staying in education, focusing on education. You know, it's interesting. Uh, regulation, I think, is a, is a hot topic. Perhaps standards is, is an area that we should uh, maybe focus on a little bit more. But, you know, give the time to settle, uh, collaborate initially, do a lot of open sharing. Um, there is some talk about trying to have some kind of standards in place. And you, you see early discussions with the bodies like the IEEE, the British Standards uh, uh, people as well. Um, 
even in the uh, White House uh, reports that came out, the two of them just came out recently, they talk about you know, this, this idea of standards. Because standards uh, becomes, uh, allows for interoperability, and then now you talk about the ethical issues. Once you put uh, some sort of, maybe the foundations of some standards in place, then you can address also the ethical issues to ensure that um, you know, it's gonna be used in, in the proper way, but also that you're not gonna get some unintended consequences from the use of uh, artificial intelligence. Okay, so let me paint you a picture for you. Uh, I, my name is Steve. This is now 2025 or 2030. I, I, um, I'm in bed. In my head, through a neural interface, I hear, Stephen, it's your um, Angus uh, chatbot uh, waking you up. You realize you have three appointments today. By the way, your flight's been delayed, so I, I rearranged it, put you on another flight. You have a dinner appointment. By the way, your dinner appointment says they're gonna be 10 minutes late. I've already made those adjustments in your schedule. Uh, and uh, as a reminder, your wife has uh, a birthday, so make sure you pick something up. So as I roll out of bed, this will already be sort of, I'll be cognizant of all of these issues. So that's, that's kind of the reality. And, and you think, wow, that's pretty futuristic. But keep in mind, DARPA is already working on mind-brain interfaces and even the, a device that can record your memories and then we, uh, play them back so in case you forget. And uh, this sort of con to, uh, con, uh, contiguous sort of connection to the internet. You know, you have the situation where they're doing studies with the animals where uh, the brains are being interconnected and uh, in fact they can solve problems better interconnected and non-interconnected. There's, there's even some theories of consciousness and trying to figure out what that means and is this solely a human thing and perhaps maybe there's even detection of this in, in insects, some, some elements of consciousness. So, you know, it, it's, a, it's a rapidly evolving area and it's a one where I think the changes and ultimately this idea of a singularity is not gonna be 50 years out. It'll be within maybe 15 years, maybe 10 years because um, um, all of these sort of innovations are happening so quickly. Let me give you one exa another example. You have uh, Google Mind or DeepMind coming up with this thing called differential uh, neural compute and it has memory and it, it learns and uh, you know it's almost kind of like a semi-human in a sense so and even this uh, dialogues that you're having with these different chat agents they're becoming so realistic that for example in China when, when they, uh, Microsoft launched Shio Ice you had 40 million users using it and some of them were actually in, fall, they fell in love with this uh, this intelligent agent and it's just a machine right so you know what are the implications the movie Her is here today and you're gonna see increasingly these elements appearing. It, you know, there is this um, special summit being held next year by a group called the Financial Services Roundtable. And um, we're gonna have a, a speaking robot there that's going to be to converse and uh, you're gonna be to interact with and, and so on. But, you know, kudos to, and I would congratulate, uh, you know, the member states and the organizations uh, being facilitated by the ITU to start entertaining some of these areas and saying, you know what, because it's going to impact both developed and developing countries, every region of the world, women, um, men, children, uh, no matter of, uh, of uh, your occupational level or, or income level, it's going to impact everybody. It's good to have some awareness of what the implications are and, and start becoming educated on it. You know, um, AI, if, if it wasn't for something like the ITU providing a platform to facilitate the discussion today and, and working with other groups, for example, with the XPRIZE, the AI XPRIZE or IBM AI XPRIZE, that's a way to facilitate the discussion and ensuring that these kind of warnings that could occur don't occur because it's all about education, isn't it? It's all about awareness and ensuring that everybody is up to date and, and you can put principles in place. So, you know, the European Parliament came up with a draft report to start this discussion. Uh, you even see some elements of this in, in the U.S. White, uh, these papers that came out just recently about starting that discussion to put principles in place or even this partnership on AI for the benefit of people in society, this consortium of, you know, Microsoft, IBM, Google, Facebook, and Amazon. It's, it's about putting best practices in to ensuring that these kind of issues don't uh, happen. And so we're not going into it uh, without preparation, and now's the time to do it. So I think we can manage it. Well, the thing is that you have these 17 sustainable development goals, you know, from, from poverty to uh, 
you know, having global partnerships on every one of them have some kind of interaction and will have either now or shortly with AI. AI is going to augment, help, help deliver, help actually achieve all of those goals. AI for social good is really about each one of those um, 17 sustainable development goals being enabled through machine learning and AI, and they will be.